And they're going to prove to you. But I want you to hear this. When your heart is sad, don't just think it's just an emotion that's running around inside of you. Because you know what sadness will do? And I got to sit down. Sadness will drive you to the point to where everybody around you, you'll make them sad too. You'll think you're talking just the normal. And what comes out of your mouth is so important. The, the man who had a great spirit when they got around you now is sad because of what's been imparted. Bless the Lord, and you won't even know it. You'll just keep going on because all of the seeds are dried up. There is nothing inside that convicts you and tell you that what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing, God is not pleased with. Bless the Lord, but when God puts some sadness on you, oh, praise the Lord, it is for your own good that it may not physically make you well, but it will get down in the root of your heart and it will clear the heart when it drives you to godly repentance. Yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. to the point where he no longer requires 
sanctification. Y'all ain't get that because I didn't get one of you. I don't think I heard about one. You've got to be sanctified. I don't care what happens. Maybe some of y'all are scared to say amen because you know you ain't sanctified. But God requires what? Sanctification. Yes, and you really know, even Church of our Lord, many of our churches, and I said that I forgot I was in Church of our Lord, I wouldn't say that if I realized I was in Church of our Lord. <laughs> but it's true. Many of our churches, all they want to do now is tell you truths. But the truth is, you must be a holy, you're going to hell. Amen. And you don't hear many people say you anymore because you don't get that what you get now, a quiet church. It doesn't matter whether it's quiet or not. Once I say what God say do, you'll shout then if you really, really, really receive it. You'll be at home shouting over what God said to you today. Amen. Because this is what it's going to take. Yes. Now all you got to do now, Bishop, is come in no, just, just bypass the altar. Don't worry about the altar. We don't even put the altar in the church no more. So, so let's bypass the altar. Praise the Lord. Come in and just give your life to the Lord. Okay, come on. Here's my life. Boom. Now I'm saved and ready to hell. Hmm. Nothing changed about you. Oh, don't work like no danger. Like Looking the same way you look when you were in the world. Nothing changed. Saints, we got to the place and, and and, and I don't want to say nothing. I see folk, and this ain't no regular church, Sunday morning church. I see folk, and I don't think about this day, and I'm not condemning y'all for the way you dress. We come to church sometimes, dress in the county. We, we don't even know. We wouldn't even want to go to the soccer field sometimes where I see folk come to church. Uh -huh. And you say, well, God ain't interested in the way you dress. That's a lie from the pits of hell. God yeah, ain't interested in the way you dress. He just is interested because Bishop, when he got ready to summon the people to the church in the wilderness, he said, you take off all that mess, you sanctify yourself, and then come talk to me. If he didn't care, he would have just said, come on. But he said, you take it all off, and you put on something decent, and you come around this mountain, and I'm going to talk to you. Let the Lord, and you say, but that was then. What about now? Well, Jesus picked it up, and back to our feet, 22 or somewhere in there, he had a wedding. It was a feast. Praise the Lord. And did y'all come to feast today? But at the feast, he found a man he had the right clothing on. But the Lord, he pulled him aside, and he said, why aren't you wearing a wedding garment? And clothing now, Jesus never would have made a power about clothing. But he was a dress for the occasion. And when we'll have church, and we'll sanctify, we all a dress sanctified. Come in there with anything on in the glory and see what happens. Mm, not gonna make it. He told you you're gonna put you on a white roll. Uh -huh. And ain't nobody gonna come in and say, well, my favorite purple is, is purple, or my favorite <laughs> clothes is purple. I want a purple garment. Yeah, he said, well, if you want a purple garment, get out of here. Because yeah. everybody's gonna wear white. Amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Folk coming in the church, bagging our pants and draws, and let me say draws, because that is the right word for it. Okay, might as say draws. We just say draws as black folks. <laughs> but coming in, they draw it all showing, and come hooping in, and everybody got nerve to say, well, come as you are. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way in that Bible tell you to come as you are. Yeah. Like but that. when you come before the Lord, you ought to come, first of all, presentable. But you come with a changed heart. That, that, that's what you was thinking about that day, wasn't it? Hey, the Lord, we got to come to church. Oh, we ain't got no changed heart when we come, but stay here long enough. And when you change your heart, God will say, come first 
of all, you got to draw nigh to God before he do what? Draw nigh to you. Oh, hallelujah. So how you going to come as you are? Just don't draw nigh. Just keep doing what you're doing. And that's what we got. A lot of church folk coming to church. That's why we can get them to come by the millions. Because there is no change in their life. They All they got to do is add church to a part of the cross and everything else they do.
And I hope when I'm preaching, somebody here to get sad. Amen. But you know what's sad is it's better than what? They might have been laughing when I was talking out there about that river. And then they thought about it. Yeah, when I cross the river, I'm going to see more. You ain't crossing the river if you don't live right. Amen. 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 Hey, the Lord. 
And the Lord be saying, he said, uh-huh. Yeah, but when you get the glory, you're going to really see what's in the brown heart. You're going to stand in judgment day, and you're going to give an account for every thought he's talking to And then I'm going to know whether you really love God or you really love him. Uh, he's going to make you get a dinner and talk. That's why you should get it right now. Amen. Because one day, every day, and I say every day, every day going to have to be given an account. And you're going to have to stand before everybody did because they're going to see you alive when you did. That's all like food for So one day, one day, preacher, when I give him an account, I don't want God to look at me and say, now why did you get that to Bishop Bradley? And then I got to do that. Oh, can you tell Bishop Bradley to leave while we need to have a private conference? He said, oh, no, the judgment day. I used to keep the secret on earth. But I told him the secret was going to be revealed. He didn't believe me. I'm going to have to stand up there right in front of Bishop Bradley and say, he said, well, why would you mind us talking to Deacon so-and-so about Bishop Bradley? Oh, can we have pride to come? And I might look at Bishop Bradley and say, all I want to, I appreciate you understand what I'm going to say. Any of them will understand it. This is their brain. And when I say it, Bishop Bradley going to scratch his head and say, I figured these people don't know what he might be anyway. Because most of the time, people always can tell on his face anyway. Thank you, God. You thought you'd be on food, but you ain't fooling nobody but your own self. Because we knew it was fake. We just smile to keep fellowship. Uh -huh. That's what I right. We just smile to keep fellowship. That's right. And go on and let you get done what you were doing, knowing you were doing all the time. And you do it more because you think you're fooling them. No, you ain't fooling me. I'm just God and nothing to just wait on God to fix it. Yeah. Bless the Lord. 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 Bless Laugh and sit up and say, ha, ah, ha, ha, yeah, that was funny. But when you got burnt, it's okay to have burnt, but God said, I take it away when it's the heart right. This Bishop, word murder is what me and June might do. Me and June, praise the Lord, we get together, we get to talking, and we get, ah, running all by, rolling all on the floor, hitting the floor. That, 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 it, it's an extensive laughter. Praise the Lord, with much action and much exuberation. And when me and June get together, we laugh so hard that you can hear a five block down the road. We hollering and screaming and beat by the day on crazy, but we ain't crazy, but we done got a dose of the joy of the Lord yeah. and it'll make us laugh yeah. and the soul feel good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I said it's enough. 
Because it purifies the heart. Said to me, he said, and, and figure out that why I know God talked. And we can turn out. 